Hey, good morning. Welcome to Battleship Iowa again. I'm Mike Getcher, the Chief Operating Officer and the Chief Engineer aboard the ship. Today we're going to continue our talks about hull preservation. We're going to talk briefly about coffer dams and also dry docking and finish up with something else at the end there. Uh, we've had a lot of questions about what a coffer dam is and I'm standing in one. This is a surface piercing coffer dam. And what it does, it pierces the water. So it's an open top box and you attach this box to the side of the ship so you can work on the hull just below the water line and just above. It's a safe place to be. So what you see here is a rubber gasket. Of course, we have a sump pump down here. We have a uh, situation here, uh, some contraptions to, to hang the coffer dam on the side of the hull. And this is in fact where someone would work once we have the water pumped out. It's a fairly common uh, concept, but it's not being used too much in the museum ship industry. I know of at least one other person that is doing it. This is how we can address those problems at the wind and water line, which is the most vulnerable part of the ship. Down deep underneath, it's being taken care of with cathodic protection. So with the coffer dam, we can extend the, the life of the hull there a lot longer. The wind and water line, of course, can be taken care of indefinitely. So that's the good news. We're trying to stay away from dry docking. Dry docking the ship is very, very expensive. Uh, we priced it out back in 2012, 13, and it was on the order of $20 million. There are no dry docks in Los Angeles. And this is one of the questions that we're gonna address here. Uh, Los Angeles doesn't really have any big shipyard anymore, but there are places along the west coast and all the way to Hawaii where we could potentially take the ship. But there still are uh, only a limited number of dry docks or graving docks uh, built into the land that can handle the, a vessel of this size. One of them is owned by the Navy up in Bremerton, but it's busy literally, as we call it, nose to tail, one ship right after another. Another one is owned in Pearl Harbor uh, by the Navy, and it used to have a, a contractor that actually used it uh, separately in a commercial sense, but that's no longer available either. That one has in fact docked the Missouri. Uh, so those are the two big graving docks that I can think of in Navy control. Uh, beyond that, you're looking at private floating dry docks, and uh, there are a couple down in San Diego. We've spoken to them. Uh, the problem we have here is not just the size and the weight, but it's also something called point load. At the bottom of the ship has skegs that concentrate load where there's a lot of weight on a small area and some of those dry docks just cannot handle that. There's also one down in San Diego that doesn't really have the depth to handle this type of ship and they would have to create a shorter set of blocks, and we'll show you blocks here, uh, upon which the ship would rest and that would complicate matters. Uh, as well. And we're not even sure we can get it across the sill, as we say, because this ship has about six foot of drag. Uh, back aft right now, we're drawing where the depth of the ship is 32 feet, three inches, and up forward, it's 27 feet, six inches. So she's kind of sitting in an angle. And it's really very difficult to, to correct all of that. Uh, there's last uh, dry dock up in um, San Francisco we, we spoke to. They didn't want to deal with the uh, uh, concentrated point loads. So there's also a very good dry dock up in Portland. We'll show it here. I've actually visited with them. Their dry dock can handle us very well, and they're a commercial operation. And so if we ever need to, we have some places to go. But once again, we're trying not to. Even in the commercial world, we're, they're trying to stay away from dry docking as much as possible because it is so, so expensive. There's even a term now called U-Wild, underwater work in lieu of dry docking. That's in the commercial world. A lot of the classification societies, in fact, accept that. You can work underwater on a ship legitimately uh, in many, many cases. So in closing here, one of the cool parts of my job is I get to work with uh, folks who take care of battleships across the country. There's eight battleships, American battleships still left, and I know somebody at all of them, and they're just great people. We work really well together. Uh, we have Mike Carr out there in uh, Missouri, BB-63 in Pearl Harbor, a good friend. We have uh, Janet and uh, Shane down at BB-60, that's the Alabama, down in Mobile. Uh, we have Ryan out at BB-62 in New Jersey, of course. Uh, we have Justin and uh, also another Chris over there at BB-59. That's uh, USS Massachusetts, and that was my dad's ship. We have uh, Terry and Chris out at uh, North Carolina. They're doing great work in Wilmington there. Uh, and then we have some new friends at Wisconsin. Uh, we're just getting to know those folks there. And then I think I didn't mention Travis at the Texas. So great people, really enjoy working with them. Uh, it's just a, a very cool part of my job. So as always, thank you for watching. And there's a link in our video here. If you'd like to donate, please do so. We very much appreciate your support. And uh, we just love doing this, so keep us going. Thanks so much.